So what, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a little more convex, so it's a little more flowing. And so I'll add just a little bit of our rope wax there. And just kind of turn that into a little bit of a dome. Okay, so we'll set that aside. And uh, let's grab, you've got this wax up just like you want it. So we're gonna carefully set this aside. And you've done a test removal, so we know we can get it off and on, and you've remelted your margins. All that's good, and it looks like you could, you could sprue it um, from either the mesial buckle, which then you'd have more work to do afterward because it's a functional cusp, or the mesial lingual. Which do you want to do? Let's do the mesial lingual. Okay. And our sticky wax is... Okay, right there, and uh, that's the waxing instrument. Okay, so we've got our uh, wax up like we want it. Um, we've checked all the parameters. We've done a test removal uh, and remelted the margins, and we've decided that we're going to uh, put our sprue at the mesial lingual cusp tip. So something, something like that right mm -hmm. okay so let's uh, heat that up and this is sticky wax this is sticky wax sticky wax yes we had one of our classmates in school who we called Sticky Wax, Wilson. Poor kid. So I'm blowing on it a little bit. Just to solidify it there, I'm gonna check our angulation and flow pattern. It looks pretty good. That's about what I'd want. Um, and then, uh, we got our inlay wax here. So that's about the right size there. Flow this around a little bit. You want to say why that's important to, yeah. to smooth that? Yeah, you, you don't want to, it's called necking if you. Uh, uh, make out with your girlfriend in the back seat, or if you constrict the flow into your wax pattern, right? But we're talking about the latter, Eric. Yeah, but okay. I, I got to be careful, get, right? I was hoping you'd get to that. Okay, there we go. So now I'm just I'm just um, creating kind of a a little funnel shape to get rid of any constriction at the entry point here. Thinking. Fluid dynamics, right? That's bigger than I want it, but it'll be okay. All right, and we'll spread it out a little bit. Okay. So that's pretty much it. We've got we got our angle and the flow pattern, everything good that way. Um, let's grab this and just do a little test try in. Uh, do you remember the dimensions that you want to be from the end when you're all through? I might go. Okay, so we want to be, I think it's six to eight. Is that right? Something like that. I don't do this very often. I think it's six to eight. We're gonna grind, you know, a couple of millimeters off when we're all through. So we want, we want the end of our pattern to be about a quarter of an inch from the top of this when we're all done. So, you know, we're gonna invest it right up to that line and we're gonna want that, the edge of our pattern to be 
you know, around a quarter of an inch. If it's too close, the, the, the metal flies through the end, breaks the investment. If it's not, if, if it's too far, um, the gases won't escape ahead of the flowing metal and you'll get voids in it. Okay. So, so we're gonna uh, kind of see what this looks like with a try-in. So we'll take that off and we'll remove this. And if you've had it off, it should at this point come off pretty easily without. Once you've got it off, now you can hold it by the sprue and that's actually okay to do. But I wouldn't at any other point in time. Uh, let's just see how we're doing here very carefully with this just it's easy to when you push this in to have it kind of snap in and hit your pattern so you want to steady it as it goes in it doesn't snap in all at once now to me um, that's a lot that's a lot of material now that that's okay I mean you, you're gonna you're gonna just need to grind off a little more on the end Okay. Does that make sense? So, yeah. you know, we're shooting for a quarter and we're like three quarters. Yeah. So I would take off. I mean, you could put a, a little, if you got a, like a Sharpie or something here, we can at least put a, if there, there are some Sharpies up front and I think, oh, you've got one. So when you separate this, I would transfer. I'd grind it down to about there. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Somewhere in that in that zone. So when you separate it, just kind of make a make a mental note of where that is. Transfer it to your investment, and then when you grind, you know, grind the end off, grind it to about that point. Okay. But that looks good. So I think we're at a good good point here. Let's just carefully, again, very carefully take that. Off, and then we're going to do the same thing down here with preventing it from necking here. Okay, that look okay? Yeah. I think we're good there, yeah, we can kind of get rid of this a little bit of extra. It is investment time. So let's take this into the lab. You can turn that Bunsen burner off. There's of the expansion liquid into the graduated cylinder for one complete 100 gram bag of the Formula One. So we're getting the, the liquid amount right. 22 grams of the... Or 22 mLs to 100 grams. Oh, or, yeah, 22 mLs of expansion liquid. Uh huh. This is the expansion liquid, and we're gonna we've got a relatively clean. We do. No, I don't like these round sided, but that'll work. We'll make it work. So we're gonna put the liquid right into the mixing bowl. Yes, thank you. That's a better spatula for this. Let me take that and. We're going to grab our pattern, which we carefully hit away here so nobody would bump it. And over the garbage can, we're going to just carefully spray on a little surfactant to uh, a little debubbleizer there. And we'll set this aside. 
And now it is time to mix. Actually, we can put this on right now. No, I, I like to wait on that. Let's wait. So let's get our powder. Is there a tear? Get all the time in the world with this. This stuff really takes a while to set. So at this point, we'll just incorporate the powder into the liquid. Just to get it started so that you don't have chunks of powder left. About like that. And we'll wipe that off. And then we'll vacuum mix for it's one full minute, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I think it is one minute. What does it say on the package? I think it's either one minute or two minutes. It's a long time. 120, 120 so two full minutes. Ooh vacuum mixing so okay I just turned five five oh one thirty five okay your timing is very good I'm surprised that that's that long it's a long time isn't it take it out and it'd be like concrete or just set up on yeah. the <laughs> boy stone wood wouldn't it you'd be done with stone okay so let's Take this off at this point. Just kind of try to vibrate as much off the tines as you can. And then, if you can, you can take and just put this under a little drip. Boy, we've got a lot of stone problems here. But if you can just do, I mean, literally just a, a drizzle. And if you hit right at the edge of that like that, uh, it's almost too much. But yeah, like that, those tines will almost be clean by the time you're done. Can't get the magic spot there, something like that. Okay, okay. so at this stage, if you can get a little bit of this up on a brush and just carefully and use your knuckle you can over vibrate these but i'm going to just slow that mainly into the intaglio there there's a little leftover surfactant i probably overdid it on that so i'm going to run this over and up i'm going to run it beyond i'm going to wash the surfactant out a little bit does that make sense So not only do I want to fill it and then watch it kind of over spill. So I'm mainly keeping away from the margins until right near the end. So I'll, oops, so I'll drip that in until it kind of starts to run over to push the surfactant out. Like that. And then, when you're sure that you've got this thing full, if you can come back and just see that little bubble right there, it's real easy to get that kind of stuff. So now I'm just going to kind of go around the margins to make sure I'm not touching them, I'm drizzling the material over them. Just to make sure that there's no bubbles that are going to get caught at the edges. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like that. I want to get rid of that bubble too. So now I think we're, we're good there. It's fully up to the margins everywhere. You could even put a little more like that. I'm not touching the margins, okay? So it's important to kind of get that down. And then we'll take, take this and just carefully
push it all the way, make sure it's all the way in, okay, firmly. And then I'm not letting it hit the pattern. I'm starting down below it there just to get it started, flowing from the bottom up. And as you get right up to where it's going to cover your pattern, kind of slow down. Let it flow into the anatomy of your wax up real slowly like it's doing. I don't want to go too fast here. And now it's starting to cover it completely. We'll just set that aside. Let's let it bench, you know, un undisturbed. And then we can uh, clean everything else up here. Do all of our rinse out. Okay, so Dr. Taylor was just telling me that after you've done this whole pour up and everything, and it just needs to dry out. Um, I asked him if I could leave it overnight and he said it has a tendency to over dry out. So to, he asked me that I just put a plastic sandwich bag around this and put a little wet paper towel in there so it keeps it nice and damp. Very good.